Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, welcome to Moffitt Library, uh, hosting Shardell Buchanan, a registered dietitian who has been kind enough to join us for some healthy uh, eating foundation tips to make mealtime uh, more fun and less stressful. Thank you for joining us, Shardell. Um, and why don't you take it away? Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here tonight. A uh, quick background about me. Like you said, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. Um, got my undergraduate degree in dietetics at Brigham Young University, and then got my master's in community health education from Brooklyn College. I've been a dietitian for over 15 years, have quite a bit of experience, and currently am in private practice working with moms who have a disabled child to make eating more simple and easy for them to feed their whole family with confidence. And so some of the tools that we're going to be over going, going over tonight are the exact same tools that I teach my clients. Um, they are tried and true, and they're going to make it easy for you to eat healthy. Here's how the class is going to go tonight. We're going to be covering several things. First, we're just going to be having a general discussion on what is healthy eating, right? Um, we're going to go over some healthy choices you can start making right now. Although from the sounds of it, Renee might already have this down. <laughs> um, we're going to learn how to make the food you're already eating a little healthier because I believe that the food that you're eating right now is good. And yes, we can boost the nutrition in it, but we don't need to make you try a brand new thing and learn a whole new way of doing things. You can just change a little thing and eat healthier right now. We're also going to talk about how to plan a healthy meal using the plate method, which is my favorite method. It's very easy and it makes planning meals a breeze. And then at the very end, we'll have a Q and a session. So if you have any questions, um, you can save them till then. You can also interject throughout. It doesn't bother me either way. So here are some common barriers that um, people often experience when they want to eat healthier. You may have had some of these yourself. We think there's, there's so much out there. I don't know what the right thing is or the information is conflicting, right? Yesterday, I heard that bananas are really great for you and you should eat them every day. And then yeah. tomorrow you hear bananas have too much sugar and you shouldn't eat them at all. It's very mm -hmm. conflicting, right? There's a lot of, of information out there that can sometimes be confusing. Sometimes you think healthy eating won't taste good, or I don't have enough knowledge to know what's healthy. Sometimes it can seem like healthy food costs more, right? Because it's labeled as organic and we think organic automatically means healthy and organic costs more. And so it seems like a barrier to being able to eat healthy. And then the last one is we think it might take a lot of time because we're going to have to prepare everything from scratch and we're going to have to cook it all at home and never eat out. That seems like it's going to take a big chunk out of your day, right? So these are just some common barriers that people have when they think about eating healthy. There are four statements up on here. I want you to read them and think about which one is true for you, because these are things that come up often. You know, do you ever eat the same foods over and over, even though you know they might, might not be the best for you? Do you ever skip meals? Do you ever think, I can't plan dinner, it's too overwhelming? Or do you start cooking dinner and then realize you don't have the ingredient that you need and you have to totally change what you're making halfway through? Does any of this happen to you? You can raise your hand. You can raise your virtual hand. <laughs> yeah, right? Sometimes this happens where you think, I don't know what to do. I'm kind of lost and stuck. Well, tonight we are going to give you some tools to make this effortless and to make it really easy for you. So after we cover these basics, you're gonna feel empowered. You're gonna know exactly what to do to make your food healthier, okay? You're gonna understand how to boost the nutrition so that the foods you're eating are better for you. And you're going to learn, you can make a healthy choice, even when you're eating out, really it's, it's easy. It may seem difficult, but that's only because you haven't heard my way yet. It's very easy. And when you implement the plate method, you're going to know right off the bat, you've got a healthy meal because you've followed this method and it, it works every time. So these are some of my clients that I've worked with in the past, um, that have taken this course. And these are some things they've said, you know, it's, it's really been helpful for me. I've learned so much. This person said she loved how motivated it made her to easily apply the techniques. It was effortless. And someone else said they noticed that when they ate more fruits and vegetables, they felt energized, more energy, which is all of the things that we want, right? This is hopefully why you're here tonight. So the first thing we're going to cover are healthy choices that you can start making right now, today. Here they are. Look at this. I'm cutting right to the chase. I don't, I don't mess around. <laughs> the first one is whole grains. The second one is fruits and vegetables. 
The third is lean protein and the fourth is healthy fats. We're going to go into each of these in depth. So if you have any questions come up while we're talking, feel free to ask them or you can wait until the end. I have a question, Shadell. I don't, I don't see it. You don't need dairy. You, have, you don't have dairy there. Is dairy part we're of We're going to get there. Okay. It is, it is a healthy choice, um, especially if you're doing a low fat dairy option. Um, dairy has a lot of calcium in it, right? And we know that it's yeah. bioavailable. It's readily absorbed when it's that form. However, it's these are the ones that I prefer to focus on because the dairy is a smaller amount. We don't need a lot of it to get okay. the benefits. All right. Good question. <laughs> so we're going to start with the whole grains. A lot of people get confused about whole grains. They think, I don't know what that is. Does that mean whole, whole wheat? Is that all a whole grain is? Um, the answer is not exactly. Whole wheat is a whole grain, but there are others. A whole grain is just a complex carbohydrate that includes the entire edible part of the grain. So Think about when you've seen like grain on rice or wheat or whatever, the seeds at the top, those are what are whole grains. Okay. It consists of three parts. It's got an outer shell. It's got an inside part. And then it's got a little teeny part in the very bottom of the inside. The bran is that outer shell it basically keeps the grain contained, but it contains a lot of fiber, B vitamins and minerals. So it's very good for you. The endosperm is that middle part and it's white. It's what usually if you have white flour or white rice, that's the part you're getting is just the endosperm. They remove the brand, they remove the sperm, the endosperm, and you're just left with the, I'm sorry, I misspoke. They remove the brand and they remove the germ. You're just left with the endosperm, which is the white flour or the white rice. And that's still good. It has protein, carbohydrates, and some vitamins and minerals, but it's not as good as eating the entire um, whole grain because the germ, the little part that sprouts into a new seed, uh, excuse me, a new plant. When you plant the seed, all of the nutrients that that plant needs to grow, to make roots, to grow to the sun, to make a new plant, all of that is contained in this little part called the germ. So when you eat that, you're getting a lot of vitamins and minerals and some protein. It's very healthy for you. So what we wanna do with whole grains is we want to incorporate them in our diet as much as we can. And it doesn't have to be just wheat. There are some pictures up here you can see. I've got some brown rice. Also wild rice that is still in the shell would count as a whole grain. We've got whole grain bread. So anytime you're eating a loaf of bread, if you do whole grain, um, multi-grain, whole wheat, those are all really great sources of whole grains. Uh, the pasta that's featured there is a whole wheat pasta. I, I didn't know if you, it's not a very popular item yet, but it is becoming more so. And often when we eat at our house, you can see my last recommendation there is to use at least half whole grains whenever you're eating a whole grain. Sometimes it's hard for people to jump right in and say, yeah, I'm going to eat 100% whole grains, right? They're not used to it. The, the flavor is a little bit different and it seems like too much. So I recommend starting with half whole grains. If you're going to have pasta for dinner, I recommend that you start your boiling water. You take whatever measurement for pasta you use for your family, and you're going to cut it in half. And you're going to take half of the pasta whole wheat and half of the pasta white. The cooking times vary, but only by like two minutes. Whole wheat is usually faster cooking. So what I do is I start the water boiling. I drop in my white pasta, set the timer for two minutes. When the timer goes off, I drop in my whole wheat pasta, finish the cooking time. You dump it out together. It's ready to go. It's so easy. So remember that the next time you're thinking about adding in half whole grains, it doesn't have to be hard. And you can even do the cooking process at the same time for some things. Um, the final picture there is of corn chips. Corn chips are a whole grain. If you're eating popcorn, that's a whole grain. Um, so these are great ways to add whole grains into your diet and get all the nutrients that they provide. Very good source of vitamins, minerals, protein, and some healthy fats. So the next one is, oh goodness. Why is it going it's the wrong way? There we go. <laughs> the next one is fruits and vegetables, which... We already know, I mean, everybody knows fruits and vegetables are good for you, right? Um, but not everybody knows fruits and vegetables offer carbohydrates. We hear carbs are bad, right? Mm -hmm. Stay away from carbs, but that's not true. Carbohydrates are a great source of energy. And when you get them with uh, fruits and vegetables, you're also getting a, a good amount of fiber, um, vitamins, minerals, and water. So when you're choosing fruits and vegetables, I say, you've probably heard this before, but eat the rainbow. That it means we want you to choose fruits and vegetables that are very colorful and that span the color spectrum. Okay. Um, 
This is because not all fruits and vegetables have the same amount of vitamins and minerals in them. Some are higher in vitamin E, some are higher in vitamin A. So the more varied your diet is, the more of those nutrients that you're adding in, you're getting a better range of nutrition. So when you're selecting fruits and vegetables, uh, fresh is good. That's it's a great way to eat fruits and vegetables in season is best because the nutrients are locked in and they're at their peak. Um, and local, if you can buy local, that's even better because as the food travels from across the country, let's say from California to New York, you would lose some nutrients in that transport process. So fresh and local is the very best. Now, having said that, there are other options that are also good for you. If you're going to eat frozen fruits or vegetables, those are frozen when they're at their peak. So all those nutrients are locked in and they can stay in. So if you're having a smoothie and you throw in some frozen berries, guess what? You're getting all those nutrients that would have been there when they were at their peak. Okay. Canned fruits and vegetables are also good for you. They're a great source of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Um, if this is my one caution, if you are choosing to eat canned fruit, please look for fruit that is canned in 100% juice, as opposed to a syrup, like a heavy syrup, which is just sugar and water. The juice is better, um, a better choice, but it's all, it's still good. So I recommend that you add a fruit or a vegetable or even better both at every meal and snack, because mm -hmm. the studies have shown people who eat fruits and vegetables have a they're healthier overall, and they have a lower incidence of disease, which I think is what we all want, right? And people even who have a disease, a current disease state, if they increase their fruit and vegetables, they're able to lower that or even reduce some of the symptoms or get rid of it entirely. So fruits and vegetables are where it's at. They're very good for you. Lean proteins. Renee is an excellent example of this tonight. She, just before we got on, she's eating red lentils. Guess what? That is a lean protein. And it is a very good source of protein. Mm -hmm. um, proteins are excellent for building, repairing, and maintaining all of your body tissues. They're necessary. They're very good for you. Um, some examples that I've got up here, chia seeds. Seeds are a great source of proteins. Um, so chia seeds, you can do poppy seeds, you can do pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds. All of those kinds of seeds are excellent for proteins. Um, nuts. Now nuts are pretty calorically dense, which means they have a lot of calories in them. So you don't need a lot, but they are, wow, they are protein powerhouses. They have a lot of protein in them and, um, good, healthy fats. So nuts are a great source for lean protein, beans, 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 lentils, and chickpeas. And when I say, or beans, lentils, and peas, when I say peas, I mean dried peas. So we're not talking about the, the green peas that come in the pod, but we're talking about chickpeas. Um, black eyed peas, split peas, all of those are great sources of protein. Okay. And then some of the other ones that we don't often think about, but eggs are a great source of protein as is milk and all of its derivatives. So that would also mean yogurt and cheese. Now, when we're planning meals, obviously we think of meat first, when we think of protein and meat is a good protein source, and it is very easily absorbed by our body, but these lean protein sources have a lot of other benefits that really as Americans, we could stand to incorporate into our diets more often. Um, very, very good for you. Very healthy. And then healthy fats. When I talk about healthy fats, sometimes we, again, we've been told by the diet culture that fats are bad for us, but they're actually not. Um, they supply energy, which is great. They help with nutrient transport. So if you are eating vitamins and minerals, they have to be transported from your blood into your body cells, right? fats can help with that. Fat also aids in growth. So it's especially important for children who are growing and fat is a part of all of your body cells, which is amazing, right? So any fat that you're eating, that you are taking in is going to then be incorporated into the cells of your body. So if you're taking in healthy fats that are very good for you, then the cells of your body are going to be even healthier. So that's why we promote this here. I've got some sources for you shown in pictures. We've got some um, fatty fish that's salmon that has a good source of omega-3 fats, olive oil, any kind of oil that is liquid at room temperature is very good for you. That comes from a plant source. Um, avocados, really great source of healthy fats. And those are walnuts, which are a great source of omega-3 fats. So all of these things are things that you want to think about incorporating into your diet on a regular basis. So now we're going to quickly go over ways to make the food that you're already eating a little bit healthier. The first thing you're going to do is anytime you're cooking, let's say you're making pancakes for breakfast. 
I want you to replace your grains, at least half of it with a whole grain. It's not that hard to do. And most times it doesn't make a difference whether you're making pancakes or muffins, even bread, you can replace up to half of the grains with a whole grain. Whole grains, oatmeal counts, cornmeal counts, as long as it says whole grain on it. Um, whole wheat is a great one. Those are all things that you can use to replace your grains. You can even use brown rice if you have that, okay? The next thing we wanna do is anytime you're cooking or, or making something at home, I want you to reduce the amount of sugar you use. Even in baking, you can reduce the amount of sugar you're using by up to a third and it will still turn out fine. Um, the extra sugar just isn't really necessary and isn't great for our bodies. So if you can decrease that amount, that's great. Uh, we're also going to add nuts and seeds when we're cooking. I know at first it seems like a little bit, I don't know, I don't know if I should do that, but I'm telling you, it is good for you. Um, chia seeds, I throw them into a lot of things. I put them in smoothies, I put them in salads, I put them in muffins, um, I even add them to bread. So anytime that you can add in some nuts or some seeds is great, okay? And then fruits and vegetables, again, eat more. <laughs> it, really, the more you can eat, the better. We, I really encourage people to aim for five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, which equates to two at each meal and a snack, right? And you can do that. The more fruits and vegetables you eat, the better it's going to be. Sure, okay. and you can, uh, you can ramp that up over time, right? So it's not a matter oh, absolutely. of you have to immediately switch over. It's just, uh, you know, try to incorporate them uh, over time. Absolutely. And I say start small. Like if you've never tried chia seeds before, probably throwing them in, everything is going to feel a little weird. But let's say that you buy chia seeds and you put them in, you just sprinkle a little bit on your salad or just a little bit on your yogurt, try them, see how it goes. The next time you're cooking, you could sprinkle a little bit more. Yeah, certainly you don't need to do all of this at once. I just wanted to give you a really great foundation because this is just one class, right? And I want to make sure that you have as many tools as possible that you can start using right away to feel better. So, um, but yes, please don't feel like you need to eat whole grains at every meal and five fruits and vegetables a day starting tomorrow. <laughs> Start small, but work up to that. That's a great goal to have. That's the place we want to be eventually, right? Over time, you'll find it's much easier and it becomes second nature. Like when you order out from a restaurant, let's say you're going to order out from QQ in Valesgate, instead of ordering white rice, you're just going to automatically go, yeah, can I have brown rice with that? It's very easy. And pretty soon you'll see that those choices are out there. It's easy to make. You just have to make and be intentional about it. Um, so yeah, quick recap of what we just went over is we talked about how easy it can be to make these healthy choices. When you are, when you're shopping at the grocery store, add in a couple extra fruits and vegetables, um, from the produce department, you can make it even easier. You don't always have to, um, buy them and bring them home and cut them up yourselves. You can buy the ones that are pre-cut. You can buy the frozen ones to add to things. You can buy the steam in bag veggies. There are ways to make it very easy for you beans if you don't want to make them from dry beans you can buy them canned like make it as easy as you possibly can for yourself okay um when you're choosing whole grains aim for at least half and do it the majority of the time if you can it's really beneficial for you to do that fruits and vegetables lean protein and healthy fats and just like renee said if we're looking for ways to add in that lean protein maybe try a meatless monday mm -hmm. or a meatless monday and a meatless Friday. <laughs> I don't know, but try and add in those meatless meals more often and add in more beans and nuts. And you're going to notice some more health benefits from that. Okay. We're moving on to how to plan your meals the really easy way. <laughs> don't worry. This is going to be so easy. You're going to be shocked. But first thing we're talking about is some tips. Okay. When you're feeding a family and I haven't asked, is everybody feeding a family here? Or have we got some groups of one or two? Are we all families? You can put it in the chat box or you can just tell me. No. Yeah, we're family. Me and Emilio, we're family. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, he's downstairs <laughs> in the family room. Oops. Husband and wife. And I want to tell him to please stop eating. Please. He can see you chewing, honey. You can chew all you want. This is a food Oh, class. you can see me? <laughs> oh, I didn't know you could see me. You two are now my favorite. Okay. <laughs> you're so Look at, you're feeding a family. Well, here's, here are some tips for you feeding a family. Um, 
I want you to include foods that most of your family enjoy. I don't know about you, but in my family, we've got a couple of people who like one person really doesn't like green peas. And I've got another mm -hmm. person who really doesn't like carrots. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I never serve those foods. What that means is that I still serve those foods to the rest of the household. And maybe they don't eat the peas that night. Not a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So just try and include foods that the majority of your family members enjoy. This is really important when we're talking about planning a meal. I don't ever want you to feel like you have to restrict things unless you have a medical necessity, a medical reason that you have to restrict a food. Please don't do it. It's not helpful. It can actually be very harmful. So don't worry about restricting foods. Worry about adding the good stuff in instead of thinking, how can I, how can I stop eating so many peanuts or how can I stop cut out peanut butter? Don't worry about that. Worry about adding in the good stuff. Worry about adding in more fruits and vegetables. Okay. Um, that's a much healthier way to look at food than to try and restrict things. Another great tip is to offer a variety of foods to get exposure and to more nutrients. So a fun thing that I like to do is when we go to the grocery store, pick up something you've never tried before and try it. Like, have you ever <laughs> tried? I don't know. I saw this funny fruit at the grocery store the other day, picked it up and tried it, tried an Aloha pepper. I had never had one before. It was delicious. I, I've, I actually really liked it. So try new foods. You're going to get exposure to more nutrients. You know, the next time you're buying corn chips, try the blue ones, try the sweet potato chips, like try something new. That's a great way to get exposure and um, keep things exciting and fun. The plate method, which I'm going to show you next. This is really my favorite tool ever can be applied to any meal. So I'm talking breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, this is really simple. Even when you're eating out, you can apply this. And it will help you to know that you're having a balanced meal. So are you ready? Here we go. This is a healthy plate. I did not come up with this, but I'd use it as a teaching tool because I think it's fantastic. So you have your dinner plate here. You can see it is divided in half, right? Straight down the middle. On one side, we have fruits and vegetables. We're going to fill that plate with fruits and vegetables at every meal. So that means you don't have to have a salad at every meal and you don't have to take vegetables and like put a special sauce on them or make them all fancy and Pinterest worthy. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be very simple. It can be steaming a bag of broccoli, opening it up, seasoning it with a little bit of salt and pepper and putting it on the plate. Okay. Make it simple and easy, but we want to have vegetables and fruit on half of our plate at every meal. Okay. The other half of the plate, you can see we've got whole grain and protein and they're kind of divided basically even a little bit more of the whole grain, but just aim for a quarter of your plate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whole grain. In this case, we're going to shoot for at least half whole grains, right? At least half. Um, and then protein again, we're going to choose lean protein sources when we can, but we just want a protein with our meal. And then the, there's the dairy that you asked about Renee. It's that little one up in the corner. This yeah. is to show us the dairy is important. Um, like I said before the calcium and the vitamins that minerals that come with that, but, um, it really doesn't need to take as much room as the other things on the plate. So we're talking like a glass of milk. We're talking some cheese or maybe a little bit of yogurt or ice cream. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh so, <laughs> so that's our dairy. So it's there, but we don't need to like, I really promote the, the plate part. And then the dairy is kind of extra on the top. Okay. okay. Let's have some fun. Who wants to be brave and bold and tell me you already had dinner tonight. Let's plan tomorrow night. Or if you want to tell me what you had tonight, we can, let's round it out. Let's make a balanced meal. So you can see how easy this is. Okay. What did you honey, have? Honey, honey, you want to tell? Yeah. Show me. Well, um, <laughs> we had, we had uh, lentil soup uh, with uh, collard greens. And uh, I went back and I got some grapes. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's and I had awesome. A, I had a piece of uh, bread. Uh, I think it was whole grain bread. Like I said, you guys already got this down. <laughs> that is excellent. Do you see how you hit all of those parts of the plate? That's a we healthy have, meal. We didn't have dairy, no. Do we have dairy? No, I don't think so. We didn't. Like I dairy. said, that's a. I had some okay. butter with my plate with my <laughs> bread. <laughs> Butter is just milk fat, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I added popcorn. I added popcorn with my uh, snack. Nice. Like, that's a whole grain. Yeah. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. I love that. 
you did a great job. So that was a great dinner. Let's mm -hmm. do breakfast. What are you having for breakfast tomorrow? Oh boy, here we go. So we normally have oatmeal and um, we have decaf coffee. And I always buy the melons. I like to mix my melons and the cantaloupes together with some grapes or he, my husband likes strawberries. I'm not really keen on strawberries. Um, and then we'll have, um, uh, what else do we have? Sometimes I sprinkle little bran. I have these bran crisps that I sprinkle on, on my toast. We, we eat Ezekiel bread for a toast and we'll, I don't usually eat butter, but I like to put olive oil on it. Yeah, I, I get my olive oil from Spain. You are fancy. <laughs> well, we were on vacation. <laughs> oh, well, good for you. You're my kind of vacation people. You come back with food, right? That's <laughs> what right. I do. Right. Forget souvenirs. I don't need a magnet. I need, uh, I need the food. <laughs> right. Okay, well, let's, let's look at that according to this plate method. So oatmeal is a whole grain. Right. And you even added bran to it. So that's more. Yeah. That's yeah. great. That's a great source of fiber. And then you've got the fruits with it, right? Your melons, your berries, all of that's right. a fruit. Um, what else did you tell me? I, already... I didn't have a veggie though. That's okay. Okay. For breakfast. Thank you for clarifying for breakfast. We just want three of these. Okay. So if you had a dairy with your breakfast, say you've had some milk with it, that's fine. Or you had a fruit, a grain, and you said something else, though, didn't you? Or didn't I miss something? Uh, I had a um, Ezekiel bread. 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 Yes, yes. That's, and, another, uh, that's another grain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe you could add some kind of protein to your breakfast. Oh, you know what I also do? I have a hard-boiled egg three times a week. I only eat it every day, every like three times a week. Okay, so if you had your egg that morning, that would count as your protein, right? Yes. It's a great source of protein. Yeah. So yeah, for breakfast, we're going to choose three of these groups okay. for lunch okay. and dinner. We're going to shoot for all of them. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you did yep. great. Definitely. You guys don't even need my help. No, we, no, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Because, you know, I, you know, I'm, I have osteoporosis. So I want to make sure I get enough dare, enough vitamin D. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know what all, I don't drink milk because I'm lactose intolerant. But I can you know, you can idea. have the lactate if you really wanted it. What, 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 what is that? That What is lactate? So lactose-free milk, lactate is the oh. brand name, but you can buy lactose-free milk. And what it does, this is how it works. They take the milk from the cow, right? And they put this enzyme in it that breaks down all of the lactose, all the, the sugar in the milk so that your body doesn't have to break it down. Um, so it makes it so that you can still enjoy milk if you like. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have any issues with cheese or yogurt? I, uh, no, yogurt is fine with, I can have yogurt as long as it's not, um, well, Greek. As long as it's know. actual yogurt, right? Yeah. Cause there are some yogurt products that are not actually yogurt, which is, drives me insane. but yeah. so here's why, because the bacteria that they put in yogurt to make it yogurt and that they use in cheese, the cultures that they use to make it cheese actually break down that sugar for you. That's why if, even if you're lactose intolerant, you can still eat cheeses, usually hard cheeses and um, okay. yogurt because that's been broken down for you. So if you want to continue to add the calcium into your diet, um, those are good sources for you to use. So but how, many times, how many, how much yogurt and how much D3 I, do I need every single meal? Do I have to Make sure I get 25 grams, 30 grams, 50 grams. How do you, how do you? Well, that would, that would depend on what your doctor's recommended. And it would be a specific advice that I could give you later on if you'd like. Um, mm -hmm. But, and it's also going to depend on if you're on a supplement, if you're on any medication. So things like that, you probably don't want to share right now. Well, I mean, <laughs> we can talk later. It's common, <laughs> but, knowledge. Um, no, it's common knowledge. You know, I have to take D3 every day, D3 and, um, calcium every single day to avoid fractures. That kind so you're of probably thing. already getting the amounts you need in those supplements. I, I you know, I hope so. I just, I bet sure. you are. I, I hope so. Okay. I, if the doctor's recommended the supplements and a certain amount, he's probably already taken into consideration your age, your weight and right. all of that um, to account for that. So, so I would be, say just continue be, to I'll, do that. Chanel, I'll be taking, they're not going to be on these medications forever. So I have to rely on 
my diet. Mm. Yeah. 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 And it's important to note that vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So you want to make sure that you're eating healthy fats because that's going to help that vitamin D be absorbed into your body. Does that make sense? If you, if you take your vitamin D supplement, if you're eating foods with vitamin D in it and you don't have any fat in there, your body can't absorb it. So we want to make sure that you're getting enough healthy fats that Mm -hmm. your body's able to use those nutrients in the way you need. Okay. 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 And also, uh, you, you do some sort of, uh, weightlifting, right. Or strength training. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Yes, absolutely. Three, three to four times a week. Absolutely. You're awesome. we We walk. Yeah, yeah, we do our we do our aerobics. We we kind of try to stay healthy that way. You are. You're doing great job. Seriously, you guys are like the best people. You're doing excellent. Okay, try. (laughs) Well, you're doing a fantastic job. (laughs) Okay, we're gonna go to the next slide here. This is what we talked about, right? The basics of healthy eating. We learned ways, to, tips and tricks to make sure that it works for your family. We don't want to restrict anything. We want to include a big variety of foods, things like that. Right. We talked about the healthy choices you can start making now, which are whole grains, fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and healthy fats. That's what you can start doing today. And just like David said, you don't need to be overwhelmed and think you have to do it all right now. Just start. Okay. Just pick one thing maybe that you can start adding in. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about healthy meal planning and how it's important to use the plate method so that you know you're getting a balanced plate. And it sounds like you two are already professional at this level. So (laughs) you're doing a great job. Uh, But why is this important? It's important because when you eat better, you're going to feel better, right? A lot of the people that I work with have low energy and they notice when they start eating the whole grains, when Mm -hmm. they start eating more fruits and vegetables, their energy goes up. And that's because you're getting more vitamins and minerals. Um, you stay full longer, especially when you include protein in a meal. Research has shown, studies have proven again and again that when you include protein in a meal or a snack, the satiation or the, the feeling of fullness stays with you longer. And mm-hmm. anytime you add in whole grains, you're also increasing the amount of time it takes uh, for your food to be digested because your body has to get the bran off and break everything down, chop it up into little pieces. That takes a lot more time than it does to digest a simple sugar. So when you're adding protein and when you're adding whole grains, you're increasing the amount of time it takes to break down your food, which means you're increasing how long you stay full. Um, Mm -hmm. Like I already said, you're going to have more energy, which is wonderful. And you're going to help decrease the incidence of disease. So just like you said, where you're currently having something that you're working on with your osteoporosis, increasing your fruits and vegetables and um, these other healthy foods is going to help you decrease the symptoms right? It's going to help you do that. And it's going to stave off some other diseases. I mean, it's been shown to help with heart disease, with cancer, with hypertension, um, and increased overall longevity of life. If you're eating, making these healthy choices, there's an interesting study that just came out, um, that looked at people, different weight points, right? So we had some people who were on the lighter side and some people were on the heavier side overall, and what adopting healthy eating behaviors did for them did, Regardless of what their weight was, these people adopted healthy eating patterns. And guess what? They all got healthier regardless of their weight. Some people think that people who are in a smaller body are automatically healthier. And that's just not true. Anyone who adopts healthy eating patterns will gain the benefits of a healthier body, regardless of your weight. So I just, to me, that is amazing and should be shouted from the rooftops because so many people get concerned about their weight when really we look at health. We look at mm-hmm. overall health and your weight is just a number. That's all it is. Um, and then the last thing of course, is that when you're planning your meals, when you say, okay, tomorrow we're going to have chicken, what are we going to have with our chicken? What's our whole grain? What's our fruit? What's our vegetable? Build a plate just like that. Right. This decreases your stress level because you already know that it's healthy and you know how quickly you can plan that meal. Like I don't have to give you a handout. I don't have to sell you anything. You just imagine the plate divide it up into those sections and you can plan a healthy meal. It's really easy, really straightforward, right? Okay, so what's next? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to start today adding in the good foods. Use those tips I told you earlier to make the food that you're already eating healthier, which you'll remember is adding in whole grains, at least half, decreasing the amount of sugar you're eating, um, adding in fruits and vegetables, and lean proteins and healthy fats. We're gonna do all of that 
right away to start making the food we're eating healthier. Those are the four healthy choices you can make. We've been over that quite a bit. So hopefully it's in your brain now. And you're going to use the plate method. I want you to start using that right away. You can use it just like we said with breakfast tomorrow morning. Um, for breakfast, remember, pick three of those groups. For lunch and dinner, try to get them all in, okay? And then that's it. These are ways you can connect with me if you want to learn more. I am um, very active on Instagram. And right now, actually, if you go to my Instagram bio, it's stronger for Ben. I'll tell you why in just a second. But if you go to my bio, there's a link there. I have a free guide on how to make desserts healthier, oh, which is cool. super fun. Oh, cool. It gives you all the tips to make um, desserts that you don't have to feel guilty about because really it's food and food should be enjoyed. Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, that's great. That's but great. My, my handle there is called Stronger for Ben because I have a, ch a disabled child. His name is Benjamin. And mm -hmm. when I started... I was a dietitian already when I had him. Um, but once he got diagnosed, I noticed that I really wasn't taking care of myself. And pretty soon I was really run down. Um, I wasn't exercising and I wasn't eating well. I was in survival mode. And eventually one day it got to the point where I was like, I have to change. I have to be better for my family and for my son. And I started exercising, working out every day and eating better and felt better. And I'm now more capable and better able to help my son. So my Instagram is called stronger for Ben because I'm doing all of this for him. And now I take these tools that I've implemented in my own life over the last, you know, 10 years and helping other moms to do the same, to make meal planning really simple and straightforward and easy so that they can take good care of their child by taking good care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, there's my email. If you have any questions, you want to follow up afterwards, you can definitely send me a message there. I do have a website again. It's got, I have a several freebies on the website. If you want to go there, you can download them for free. And then on Facebook, I'm Shardell Buchanan Nutrition. That's um, how you can thanks. connect with me if you want to. No pressure, no, but no, I feel no. like we're friends. Yeah, this is great. This is great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shardell. So, this was yeah, no problem. Um, if you don't mind, I would love to hear from you something you learned tonight in the class or something that um, you feel like you want to do differently. Do you want to go first? Well, what I learned was that uh, you have to incorporate these um, food items in all meals. And uh, I, I wasn't aware of that. So that's important to know. Very good. Yeah. I like the fact that, you know, you said that we were on the right track. I want to stay on the right track. Um, and I want to make sure that I, I'm not, I want it to be just nature, just, you know, natural. You know, I don't have to worry about like what you were saying, whether I should I add it. Should I add a grain now or should I do this? But I think it's a little, it's a plan. And I think I can follow it better than I have been. I mean, you know, we go off the, we go off the rail once in a while. We have potato chips once in a while. <laughs> we all do. That's part of being human. You're supposed to have potato chips every once in a while. <laughs> well, I don't know. Cause sometimes we just can't stop eating them. I, That's okay. <laughs> I, I thought that it was really uh, important and useful to hear that, you know, nutrition is supposed to be empowering. We're supposed to feel right. like we have <laughs> uh, control over what we're eating and being deliberate. And it's not difficult to no. uh, make good choices. You just have to be intentional about it and just I, aware I of what you're eating. I agree. I Thank agree. you. I, I love all of that. Yeah, I think I'm going to make a change with the with the uh, lactate, the diet, the dairy. I yeah. didn't realize that I I could still drink milk with using that brand lactate. You said it was lactate. Lactate is the brand, but I'll tell you this right now: lactate typically costs a dollar or a dollar fifty more than the store brand oh. of lactose free. Just look for lactose free milk, and you can even get it at Aldi. That's where I get it. Aldi. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, lactose free. It usually comes in a half gallon there in the like the cardboard half gallon. Uh, but yeah, try that. Now, if you're going to do something like a cottage cheese, like I said, a soft cheese, you would still need the lactose free variety. But if you're doing a hard cheese like cheddar, you should be just fine doing that. Cheddar cheese, yeah. Yeah, well, a hard uh, cheese, like something that's hard, you know, hard enough that you can grate, those cheeses okay. should be fine. Okay. Hold um, up yeah. one second. I'm sorry. Let me uh, wrap up and then we can move on to the, the Q&A. Um, Let me stop screen sharing for you. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, we're going to move into a uh, Q&A session now. Um, if you 
uh, enjoyed the video on YouTube. Next time, maybe come in person so that you can uh, benefit from the conversation. But thank you so much for joining us and uh, yeah. have a good day, everyone. Thank you. You thank too. You. All right.